Hey friends, it's me, Micah. This is the Homestead Bandwagon. I'm standing in front of our LSMT342. LSMT342, yes, that is what it's called. Um, had this thing three years now and just hit 500 hours. We're not power users, but we use this tractor plenty. Um, so we're gonna do a little review and uh, do a maintenance on this thing. Well, first for the review, it's been a good tractor. You can look at our other reviews to hear specifics, but since our last review a year ago, haven't had a lick of problems, nothing's broken down. Anything that has broken, I broke, um, and that's really not been anything. So there's the review, tractor's been great. No big news there. So if you just came to hear if there's any bad news after 500 hours, nah, there's not, but you know, stick around to watch the rest to help the YouTube algorithm or whatever. Well, now on to servicing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna service the tractor. Um, you know, I've done oil changes before and stuff like that, but I'm gonna do a full service here, uh, minus the radiator. I'm not gonna get rid of the radiator fluid. It's fine. Um, I'm gonna start with the hydraulics and then, uh, Probably do an oil change, change out the fuel filter, if I have enough energy. I might just do the hydraulics, you'll just have to see. But we'll start there. Um, it's a October day. The sun's out, this is the last sun we're ever gonna see again. The ground's a bit moist. I, I grabbed some cardboard to throw on the ground to stop me from getting wet. It's not gonna work. When you're servicing your tractor, chalk the wheels, um, put your bucket down. I'm using the, 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 the box blade over here to arrest the motion of this tractor if it decides to roll over me. Tractors don't respect you, man. <laughs> now, the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the, uh, the hydraulic filter or the hydrostatic, one, one of the filters here, just to show you if you're just doing a filter only change, how ridiculously fast this fluid comes out. Uh, in this tractor, there's like over 11 gallons of fluid. So I'm just gonna show how fast it comes out so you can be prepared if you're just doing a filter change. And then I guess I'll plug it back up and drain it how you're supposed to because my catch pan, although large, is only a five gallon. And I don't really feel like I don't know, trying to sop up another seven-ish gallons off the ground. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a process on these guys. Okay, can you see this filter? I'm going to back the catch pan right up to under it. It's not going to matter because this stuff's going to come shooting out. I mean, seriously, when you change this filter, you got to be like the little Dutch boy. If you've never heard that story of the little Dutch boy, I, I can't help you. I'm using my Matco filter wrench here. I guess that's a bit of an anticlimax. But you can still see, I mean, this fluid is flowing out of here so fast. So if you are ever changing this big filter, just be ready. I mean, you can lose a lot of fluid real, real fast. You can see if you're trying to spin on your new filter, this hydraulic fluid just pours out of there. Just be ready for it. Now this filter, because it's sitting straight up and down, you'd figure 
when you unscrew this thing, a ton of fluid would come leaking out. Well, this one was on pretty loose. This thing's caught a couple blackberries and some sticks for sure. But look at that, barely any leaking out when you take this filter off. Isn't that strange? The other one that's sitting horizontal just pours out everywhere. Now right back here, you can see this white plug. That's the drain for your rear end. And there's another one a little bit beyond it, it's kind of covered by your draw bar if your draw bar is pushed all the way in. So uh, we're gonna crack the two of those open and uh, drain the system real quick, or what's left of it. Hopefully there's five or six gallons in there, otherwise we've got a bit of a problem with uh, leaks or oil consumption or something. We'll cross our fingers. Oh, that one's still draining that oil. What size is that? All right, the biggest wrench I got is this uh, 19 millimeter, and I'm here to tell you that ain't, that ain't gonna fit, friends. So I gotta go pick up a, a bigger one than that. <laughs> yeah, always, always be prepared for the job you're gonna do, right? Well, that's on there pretty good. What's this, like a 32 millimeter? Ugh. I am pulling on this with all of my considerable might and it is not coming loose. Always a good sign. Ugh. Boy, is that painted on there? Holy smokes. <clears throat> I might have to hit this thing with an impact. That's ridiculous. Come on now. Ah, yeah. Yeah, she's on there real good. How bad do I want that thing to come off? That's the question. Pretty bad. Holy smokies. Let's just do it one more time. Oh, oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna hit it with the gun. Amazing. There's a conundrum. This thing don't fit. Now that was a 27. Ow. Must be a 29. <sighs> All right, that's a 30. Small disaster.
Okay, so we got all our fluids out. We got our little plugs out. There was a little uh, little metal flake on both of these. I'm about to kind of ground the gears a tiny bit every now and then, but it'll be all right. Um, we're gonna get these puppies back in, get our filters back in. Uh, filter number uh, 4007563. And filter number well, this is a Donaldson. 4034723. So those are our hydro, hyd, hydraulic and hydrostatic filters. I don't know which one's which. They're both under the tractor. I'm going to fill them up with a little fluid, then snap them in there. I guess we'll spin them on. We're not going to snap them on. Let's do that real quick, and then uh, get to changing the oil on this thing. Now a quick note on hydraulic fluid, you should always look in your manual for what kind to use. Let's say you don't know how to read, well I'm here. You want to use a universal tractor hydraulic fluid. See a lot of people see AW46 hydraulic fluid and think, well, that's what we need. And that is not what we need. We need an ISO 46, I guess there's a lot of names for it, but ISO 46 tractor hydraulic fluid That's because this has a transmission, it's not just a hydraulic system. So I don't know all the science and witchcraft to it, but that's what you need. So when in doubt, buy the more expensive one. I never know if these are tight enough. You know, what's nice about this filter is you can put it on without crawling under the tractor. What's not nice is if you fill it full of fluid before putting it on, it all comes tumbling out. And all over your hands and everything else. So then when you screw it on, hoping to not have any leaks, it's already pre-covered in fluid. You can't screw it on tight enough, so you use your filter wrench. Well, and you screw it on and can't really tell if it's on tight enough or too loose. And of course there's hydraulic fluid dripping everywhere so we can't use that for a gauge so we just kind of throw it on there and uh, hope for the best. Let me just one more spin here. All right, now we got to refill this sucker. Again, it's supposed to be about 11 and a half gallons. We pulled about 10-ish gallons out. Not too bad. All right, so we got this guy full of fluid. The uh, next thing I'm gonna do real quick is just start the tractor up. So I wanna make sure we don't have fluid spewing everywhere. Um, we added what we took out. Took out 10 gallons, added 10. Probably have to top it up some more, but for now I'm just gonna add that much. You know, there's there's fluid in the hoses. I put some fluid in the, in the, uh, the filters. I don't wanna overfill it. So we'll start this up, let the fluid move through the system. The system's self-purging. You don't have to crack lines or anything and uh, let the oil get heated up too, then we're gonna change the engine oil. Let's cross our fingers here that nothing uh, starts spraying everywhere. Now 
Now these guys on the side of the oil pen, these are a, a 22 millimeter. I know that because uh, the last time I used them was when I changed the oil and there was already paint knocked off of these uh, high quality Pittsburgh uh, Watch my doies. Oh, I gotta take the plug out of this drain pan or this catch pan. Oh boy. Yeah, that always comes squirting out faster and farther than I think it will. And I don't want to lose this little ring. That would be a bad time. Oh, and I got a bunch of oil on my cardboard. Nah. See, I can't get too covered in all this stuff, because if I do, I get in trouble when I go inside. Ah. We'll undo this one blind. It's always a really good choice. Come on now. I got that one too. Every time I change the oil on this, I swear I'm going to replace these little copper or brass, whatever they are, washers, and I never do. There's no way that'll ever come back to bite me. Now here's what's great about changing the oil filter on this thing. There's the filter buried behind all this stuff. And this is a newer filter that's smaller than the old filter, which you couldn't even get out. Anyway, you're going to pull that filter off and oil goes everywhere. So that's really fun. Oh boy. Oh yeah. These filters are always a joy to take off. I got these filter pliers because they let you put them at angles to get to these filters better, but they go to the angle too easy. There's no way to tighten up their angling action. So this was a purchase that's not paying off. See so if you have to really squeeze on a filter, they just kind of cock off to the side on you, which isn't good. You try taking these filters off with a, one of them metal band filters, just going to be miserable. So you got to have the jaws of life to do it. People will tell you to take off your loader frame. Feel free to do that if you want. I ain't got time for that. Yeah, we got just oil pouring everywhere here when we take that oil filter off. I guess I should put a new one in there. I wonder where I put it. There it is. <sighs> now, unfortunately, I forgot to bring oil with me. And what's also unfortunate is this is the filter I grabbed. Filter number, oh, I don't know. It doesn't have a number, so there's no filter number for this. Hold on. 40406 or 4040965. Okay. Look at how fat this thing is compared to the filter I just took off. The fat one's really hard to put on. <laughs> I gotta go put some oil in it and then we'll slap it on there. Now I've already done two videos on the joys of taking off and putting on this oil filter. It's, it's not joyful. Um, you can go back and watch those videos. I'm just going to get this thing on there. Um, just make sure you get this rubber o-ring on here. I've had people come in, can't figure out why the tractor is spewing oil everywhere. That's why. Oh, this thing is so oily I can get to locate on here. Maybe we'll do another video on the joys of installing this oil filter. Whoever did invented this setup should be forced to do nothing but this oil change for the next year of their life. Maybe then they'd understand 
why we were so upset with them. A whole bunch of wires in the way. I gotta kind of pull down. There. It is so tight against this hose and this set of wires that you can just barely spin it on there. And of course, your hands are all oily while you're doing it. And of course, you just want to go hand tight with these. You don't need to gorilla it on there. But with it so thick and oily, how do you know if you really got it on hand tight? Well, that's a great question. And how would you tell if you had a leak? Because you've already leaked oil everywhere. You're asking a lot of great questions today and I wish I had the answers to them. Now, while the oil filter is on the passenger side of the tractor, the oil fill and dipstick is on the driver's side, well, the left side, just depending on where you live. So dipstick yonder, fill over here in a really difficult place to get to because of this loader frame which, yeah, I could have taken off the loader frame, but, you know, I'm the, I'm the one doing the oil change here. I'll do it the way I want. And I'm also going to use the same funnel that I just used for the hydraulic fluid. Sue me. Now, this is supposed to take 1.6 United States gallons. I would have preferred if they'd used hectares or... Hectors? I don't know what a hectare is. I think that's a like the measurement. I would have preferred if they, I don't know, some old timey. I was going to make a joke. Whatever. Pretty sure I'm using some dynamite camera work here, really. So I've already added a gallon ish. So let's see if we can add another 0.6 here. That should be fine. Okay, so this air filter has these little latches. One's hidden back here. Can't even see it. Uh, you can kind of take this thing and take this bracket and rotate everything forward, which helps. So we just kind of move the bracket forward a tiny bit and then you fish your finger back here and try to unlatch it. And half the time it works all the time. All right, what's this air filter look like? It's been a dusty year. Oh yeah, a little bit of dust in there. Just a, just a bit. It's fine. It's, everything's okay. Oy, 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 oy. All right, here we go. This is always the part I like to see. I had cleaned this filter out. Had a job I was doing. Look at all that stuff. Holy smokes. That is a dirty air filter. Yeah, when people come in to buy an oil filter for the tractor, I'm always like, hey man, let's get you, <coughs> let's get you an air filter too. And they'll look at me like I got two heads. I mean, I think I was started, I don't know, speaking Dutch or something. But uh, you see how dirty this thing got. And we didn't get much use in it out of the year. The excuse is always, well, those air filters are expensive. And they are expensive, but what's more expensive is a new engine right? The inner of these things doesn't get as bad as the outers do. So in this case, I'm just changing the, uh, the outer. I'd already changed the inner pretty recently, but we got to make content here. But that outer was really filthy. I, I, I'd almost change my air filter more than I changed my oil. I mean, those things get just knackered. But here's the new one. This is part number 4000-7576, outer air filter. Let's uh, put the inner in it and then put the outer and the inner into the air box.
Oops. We're gonna rotate this just a little bit. Does that inner snap don't want to snap? Let's start with that one maybe. I should usually clean this thing out too. Oh well. Okay, so on the fuel, fuel filter on the bottom, you got this uh, sensor thing. You gotta disconnect your wiring before you try to spin this thing off, otherwise you're gonna bust your wires. And uh, I can never, never remember how these work. Let's see if I remember now. Yep, yeah, little tab here. I can never remember if I'm supposed to push it or pull it. I think you pull it out when this bottom half comes out. Okay. I push this tab in. <laughs> Who would have thought? Connection looks clean. You can always put some uh, electronics cleaner in there if you want. Here's where it gets messy. So I'm going to unscrew this uh, sensor on the bottom of this fuel filter and fluid's going to pour out. Directly on top of that, which is, uh, I believe, my starter, those don't ever get hot or have sparky things around them, do they? So we're going to unscrew this. Fluid's going to start coming out. Um, we're going to unscrew this, which is also full of uh, fire fluid. So we'll pull both those off. You know what? We'll leave this sensor on. How about that? And we'll just unscrew the filter, and then we'll empty the filter out somewhere. Where's my uh, filter wrench? Hmm. Oh yeah, can't get that around anything. <laughs> oh, this is working out great. I really thought it'd be a good idea to get this filter wrench that you can twist and move around, and it's really not working to my advantage the way I thought it would. Holy smokes. Who put these filters on here? It was me. Ow! They also pinch your fingers. Son of a gun, that hurt. This can't be on here this tight, can it? Let's try this one more time with the filter wrench that I'm never going to use again. Lefty Lucy. Ah. Okay, I'm going to use a I'm going to use a filter wrench that doesn't have benders and twisters on it. Just a good old-fashioned filter wrench. Oops. Let's not smash all of our electrical lines. Alright, this was a better choice. Okay, filter's out, full of diesel, and a little o-ring. Make sure we keep that. Now we got to make sure to refill the other filter, because if we don't, we're going to have a terrible time trying to purge this system. Okay, we got a filter full of diesel with the sensor on the bottom. Make sure you do that ahead of time, believe me. We're going to screw this thing on. The reason we're filling this full of diesel is you do have to purge this system. So that's the fun part. So let's, uh, let's get this filter on there. Yeah, we got to weave it around all this stuff without spilling any. Oh, <laughs> forgot that tiny little O-ring. That would have been a problem. It's a lot easier to put this on than it was to take it off, let me say. And I'm sure I tightened it too tight, but whatever. Okay, electrical connection. 
Okay, so we got the fuel filter on. Now we got to purge the fuel system. Otherwise, your tractor is going to start, run for a little bit, and then die. I really got to make sure you got that filter full of diesel. And then this next part, you know, if you got any young ones nearby, you can cover their ears. <clears throat> because the next part, it can be a real dickens. What you got to do is, you got to pump this a whole bunch, this little primer on the top. You just pump it, and pump it, and pump it. Basically, you just pump it till you can't pump no more. And it likes to pump. Let's see if that's enough pumps. Then we're gonna take this pet cock here and we're gonna open it and some air is supposed to come out. It's supposed to come burbling out. It's supposed to come burbling out. And some fuel will come with it too, so we'll get a little diesel everywhere. Yeah, see all we got right now is nothing. Not even air. If we pump it, air pumps out. There we go. See the book will tell you to close that thing while you pump. You can, but to really get that air out sometimes you gotta open that petcock while you're pumping. I'm gonna build some more pressure in this system. Now we got some pressure in there. Let's open this petcock again. Oh boy. Yeah, we had some air pressure in there. All right, let's shut it again. And pump it again. And open it again. And watch out, it'll spray in the face of diesel. See that? Okay, I don't see any air bubbles. Let's close it, pump it a couple more times. Oh, it's real hard to pump. That's good. That means you don't have a bunch of air in the system, but you do have diesel everywhere. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're plenty primed. And we'll get some rags here. Try to wipe away the 10 gallons of diesel we just wasted. Now, sometimes these just don't like to prime. The big deal is making sure you got fuel in that filter. If you don't, you're having a bad day. I'll wipe off that, some of that diesel. Now the real test here, the real test is starting this thing up. If it runs without dying, we're in good shape. If it dies, obviously we are not in good shape. We're not, not talking about physically, we're talking about mechanically, maybe emotionally. And who made this mess over here? There's just stuff everywhere. Now what I like to do is run it through a ignition cycle a couple times, priming it in between, because you don't want to be out there thinking you purged all the air out of your out of your fuel filter and the thing dies in the middle of the field. I've had it happen. So I'd say, you know, just go through that purge cycle a couple times, spray diesel everywhere, you should be good. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you, uh, doing a service on the tractor. Um, I didn't do it on camera, but check the radiator, made sure it was full of fluid definitely got to grease this whole machine when you do your service. Um, other than that, those are all my pro tips. So been a good little tractor. Hopefully we have another 500 great hours uh, with this machine and another three years of uh, little miracles every day. 
You know what I forgot? I was doing the ding dang fluid in the in the front axle. Jeez Louise. And I don't have any of the fluid, so let's just pretend we're doing it. <laughs> you fill it here, you check it here. So when you loosen this little bolt up, if fluid comes out, you got too much. And there's a drain plug, kind of ish. Right there, there's a little white guy. I don't know how I forgot to do that. So I ain't got no 8090, so whatever. Um, we'll just move on with our lives.